What is the meaning of life? That's the question we've been discussing now for several months on this program. And you may ask, well, big deal, why do you discuss what is the meaning of life for week after week after week? Well, you remember the illustration we started off the program with several months ago. We mentioned that uh, it's as if someone drew up a great tour bus in front of your door one morning and invited you to get on board because they were going to take you on an interesting trip. And you got on the tour bus and headed out to the M1 and it began to move at about 60 or 70 miles an hour. And after a few hours, you asked the person beside you, where are we going? And the person beside you said, well, I don't know. Uh, ask the person in front and you asked the person in front and they said, well, I don't know where we're going. We're just going somewhere. And you began to wonder about the mentality of the people that were your fellow passengers. But after a few hours more, you started to ask other people on the bus and they all replied the same way. And then somebody said, don't worry where we're going. Let's break out the drinks. Let's break out the food and let's have some fun. And so you all had a wonderful lunch and you settled down to have a snooze. And then after you wakened yeah, at about seven o'clock in the evening, you again began to ask the same question. But where are we going? And people kept replying the same way to you. It doesn't matter where we're going. Let's just keep on going. And so you all went to sleep that night and wakened up the next morning. Again, you asked the same question. Uh, does anybody know where this bus is going? And by now, you were used to the reply. Everybody had got the same story. Don't worry where we're going. Let's keep on cleaning the windows. Let's keep on picking up the garbage. Let's keep on being uh, happy with each other. Let's keep on eating. Let's keep on drinking. Let's keep on having parties. Let's sing some songs. It doesn't matter where we're going. And so you continued like that through that day and through the next week and through the next week and through the next month and through the next year. And day by day by day, everybody began to talk in the same terms, not of where they were going, but of what they were going to do while they were on this bus. Until gradually, no one seemed to bother where the bus was going at all and no one seemed to care. Except when children were born, they seemed to have have enough freshness in their minds to ask the question. But gradually they were taught by the other adults to ignore that question and to concentrate instead on just cleaning the windows, on drinking, on eating, on having parties, on keeping themselves distracted. Gradually, of course, you noticed that the only people who ever got off the bus were the people who died and were thrown off. And uh, there came a time when you wished you were dead because that was the only way you could stop the world and get off. That's why we ask the question, what is the meaning of life? Because many of us feel we are in exactly that situation, except that instead of a tour bus, we are on a spaceship that is shaped like a sphere. And instead of going at 70 miles an hour, it is cruising through space at thousands and thousands of miles an hour. And none of us seem to have any idea of where it's going or where we're going to end up at the end of the journey. All we know is that there seems only one way to get off this spaceship at this time, and that is by dying. And that's why it has become the fashion in our era to write books on how to die, how to commit suicide, how to get off this spaceship. We have become so mesmerized by the idiocy of cruising through space at incredible speeds, not knowing where we're cruising to, that gradually some of us have begun to realize the only way into sanity is out of all sanity and into insanity. That's why we're asking this question, because more and more of our young men and women, as well as more and more of ourselves, are asking the question, what's the purpose of it all? Why bother? We feel like a houseman who years ago wrote that poem, you remember, Yonder see the morning blink, the sun is up and up must I, to wash and dress and eat and drink, and look at things, and talk and think and work, and God knows why. Oh, often have I washed and dressed, and what's to show for all my pain? Let me lie abed and rest, 
Ten thousand times I've done my best, and all's to do again. Many of us, who step out of the front door every morning into the wet, driving rain, to carry out the same miserable, boring tasks that we've done for years, many of us feel that way in these days. That's why we're discussing the question, what is the meaning of life and why we are alive? Because... Thousands of us are bewildered about it. We don't know the answer. We don't know why we're alive, and we don't know what the meaning of life is. So that's why we're discussing it. Do you remember we said that in spite of the fact that there seems such bewilderment in all our minds about the meaning of life and about the order and purpose of life, yet we have to admit that in the world itself there is a great expression of order. We notice the way the birds fly south in time to avoid the frost. We notice the way our hearts beat regularly year after year without any visible means of support. We notice how the blood circulation carries on, touring round miles and miles of veins and arteries and carrying 64 different substances without it turning to sludge. We are amazed at the order and organisation of our human bodies. We are also overwhelmed by the design and order that is evident in the world of nature. Those of us who have studied the chart of the elements are amazed at how the elements fit into one another in a certain systematic pattern on the basis of their weights. And so we see that even though we are bewildered and think that the world has no meaning, yet the world itself seems to have lots of order and design in it. And so you remember we said that there seems to us a lot of reason for believing that the world did not originate out of insane chaos or out of absolute chance. But in fact, it can be traced back to some intellect that it is at least as intellectual as our own. We, in other words, agreed with Einstein, who said that he his religion consisted of a great respect for the great mind that originated the universe. And so what we have been saying is that there is a great deal of circumstantial evidence around us to suggest that there must be an intellect behind this universe. Even if that intellect used uh, some system of evolution to uh, end up uh, bringing the world where it is today, still some intellect must have programmed that evolution. It did not come through time plus chance. Even if there was a Big Bang, there had to be something that exploded. There had to be something that made the Big Bang. Even if there was a single cell amoeba, there had to be somebody that originated the single cell amoeba and planted within it the potential to turn into more than a single cell amoeba. And so what we have been saying is that there is a great deal of circumstantial evidence to suggest that there is an ordered personal intellect behind the universe that is at least as personable as us. Then you remember we wondered, is there any empirical evidence, touch and see evidence, to show us that that intellect has ever tried to communicate with us? Is there anything that we can point to and say, there is not only circumstantial evidence, but there is actual touch and see evidence that this intellectual personality behind the universe actually does exist. And of course, you know how we uh, discovered that there is, there is evidence that that person exists. And it isn't in people like Muhammad or Buddha or Confucius or any of the other great religious leaders who were just human beings like the rest of us, people that have never got off the bus themselves, that have always been on the bus. But there is a remarkable person who joined the bus at some point in the journey, who came from outside the bus. And that remarkable person has told us that there is a personal intellect behind the universe. That's why we're discussing this question, what is the meaning of life? Because we say the only way to find out the meaning of life is if we can find some person who has come from outer space, who knows what it's all about and who knows who originally created it. That's the person that we're talking about these days. Let's continue a little further 